What is going on ladies and gentlemen, before this video gets started, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our merch website, teespring.com slash stores slash nights dash of dash whore dash merch. Link is in the bio. That was a mouthful to say, but check out our store, man. We have so much good Knights of War stuff that you can't even, you can't see. You just can't see. It's too white. The screen is too white. But we got Knights of Horror logo stuff. We got Miles 4 podcast stuff. We have East versus West stuff. We got stickers. Much more to come in the future. But definitely check out our merch store. Buy some merch. Support the channel. Now to your feature presentation. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy Anthony and your boy Sam here. What's good, gang? And uh, as you guys saw, Sam's in Arizona now and I'm in California, but we're still making it work, man. It's just like yeah. quarantine days. It's just like it's just like it's March again. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a, an eternal March for us. It's okay. Uh, I, I mean, uh, one death. What, I mean, like, it's not like I'm part It's like he's never coming anymore. back. He'll, he'll come back. <laughs> You know, to come visit yeah. and stuff. So it's not like he's gone yeah. for it. But nonetheless, we're here to talk about the new uh, HHN speculation map for Hollywood that was put out by our um, our good boy, HN Nightmares, on Twitter, who is famous for putting out these speculation maps. He has been doing it uh, for a lot now. And, uh, and apparently, from what I've been hearing from everyone, his speculation map is usually on point as to what's coming to the event. Um, and he's got, like, an inside source. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And uh, <laughs> this is why we review them. It's called imagination. Imagination. Um, so we got a we got. A, so before we get into this, I've I've been seeing a lot of like heat on on social media uh, as far as you know the event being a small event this year, and you know you know a lot of the mazes not a lot of people are happy with and stuff. I'm gonna go on full and say this. This is my opinion too. I don't know what Sammy thinks, but I'm just glad that we're getting an HHN, and I'd rather have less mazes and higher quality than them trying to push out 10 mazes and be less quality. At least. I, I think we're both on the same page of uh, sometimes less is more. Yeah. Uh, but I think with an event like this, uh, if we got 10 really bad mazes, then I think we'd be disappointed. I mean, once again, we're going to be happy that we get anything. Yeah. But I feel like I know that John Murdy's smart and the rest of the creative team is smart. Yeah. And they're knowing, hey, this is what the critiques are going to get. Yeah, we can get all this backlash early that we're putting out six or seven bad mazes. Or I mean, or we're gonna put out six or only put in six or seven mazes. But if we put out ten bad mazes, that's gonna do worse to our reputation. Yeah. Cutting back. Um and I really think obviously I know some people are gonna be like, Well, there's less mazes, so the lines are gonna be stupid. Yeah. Um I, I hate to break it to you, but if we haven't solved COVID by now, um, when we should have already been in the deep, the, you know, the declining, yeah, uh, I don't anticipate us getting it under control by October. Right. Um, I, I think, well, you know, I think we have a better grasp on it than we did, obviously, in the beginning. Right. But I also know that, you know, people have become a lot le more lenient. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, for example, here in Arizona, you know, we're we're kind of back on a spike because we opened things a little sooner than later, and people weren't social distancing, people weren't wearing masks. Right. And I imagine that's going to continue, unfortunately, uh, much into October and September. So, uh, if we, as long as the theme parks remain open, I'm going to remain happy. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for this lineup. I know that you have some critiques on it, but I'm pretty happy with what we got. So I, I think we can um, do it. Yeah, I, I think I'm just I, the only. Yeah, and we've talked about this in the past. I'm just not looking forward to one maze. However, um, not saying that you know I'm not going to go in it at all. I uh, you know, and you, Sammy knows this. I, I'm just I, when it comes down to my music taste, I, I'm very you know I don't listen to a lot of the newer stuff. I listen to more uh, metal, rock, punk. You know, I listen to that kind of genre of music. And I know Sammy has a very open mind about all music, so he listens to just about everything. Um, so, you know, when it comes down to, like, a music choice, uh, you know, and I guess this will start us off, I guess. And, and before we go any further, this is just a speculated map. Nothing has been confirmed. Um, however, I'm going to say this map may contain spoilers in case any of these speculations do come true um take all this with a grain of salt nothing has been confirmed by you know the man himself 
uh, Mr. John Murdy. But um, we're going to review it anyway just because we know HN Nightmares has a, a past of, of usually getting a lot of these right. So uh, Billy Eilish, we'll start with Billy Eilish. Um, as you guys know, I, I'm a huge metal punk fan. I mean, obviously, the Iron Maiden poster behind me says it all every time. Um, and, you know, I, I, I know a couple of her music. I know a couple of her songs, and that's just due to, like, you know, either I've heard covers of it or I've heard it on, on like, movies or I've heard it on, on something, you know what I mean? And I, I, per se, am not really... This is the maze I'm least looking forward to, but I, I am going to go in it with a very open mind because maybe it will blow me away. Um, there's mazes in the past that I was not really looking forward to, and they blew me away. So, um, yeah, I, I, depending how they execute this maze, um, I I would like to see what their plans are. If they're gonna go inside like her her head, or like a like I guess she writes a journal and she writes like very creepy drawings. So if they're gonna bring that to life, that could be very interesting. I'm just kind of curious of how they're gonna fit. If they're gonna put her music in, how they're gonna fit that in? You know what I mean? I, I think I, I think there's a lot of ways that you could fit her music in. Uh, especially like her newer album was very like had some dark undertones to it like uh, I think it was like one of the songs something like All Girls Go to Hell or something like that and uh, Bad Guy obviously was probably her biggest hit um, yeah um, and so she has like these creepy things and she shot some really creepy music videos um, her all her newest album cover is pretty terrifying she's a very unique style if you've ever seen any pictures of her yeah. Um, uh, and, and I just think it's gonna, you know, I think it's an opportunity for us to go. Hey, we don't really know what this is going to be because I really feel like we, we don't know who Billie Eilish really is. She's only eighteen, yeah. which is wild to me with the amount of success she has. Yeah, uh, but that's neither here nor there. I think it's gonna be really cool because obviously we've had some really cool music mates in the past in LA, All right? Um, and with you know Black Sabbath, um, Alice Cooper, um, and all of these were metal. Um, and so I don't know how they're going to really incorporate this, uh, like, darkish pop in there. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's going to be really cool. Um, like, if you, like, I think it's, uh, You Should See Me in a Crown is a really creepy music video. Yeah. Like, she has, like, spiders crawling everywhere. She has this pet tarantula, which is... Oh, cool. God. Yeah. Um, so if we got the spiders everywhere, I already guarantee Tony's freaking out. Off the top, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think it'll be a good job if they, you know, can get into those uh, arachn- affect us with arachnophobias. Um, yeah. So I, I'm really excited for that because, like I said, I think there's an opportunity here um, to to change a lot of people's minds. Um, right. You know, we heard we've heard critiques in the past on how they're going to do that as a maze. That movie's funny. I eat Ghostbusters, and you know, you both and I can agree on this. We had a great time every time we went through Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, every time. Uh, every time. Uh, and, and I think it's because it has a nostalgia factor to it, obviously, which is cool. But they really did incorporate some really good scares. Because I will say, there was times where we'd be walking, and I was like, oh, it's just black walls, and boom, there's a scare. Or, like, yeah. or like I knew the scare was coming, and it would still get me. Um, right. So, like, I definitely, I definitely think this could have some of those options of really, like, some people are going to let their guard down when they first get in there. And yeah, there's gonna be those scares, rapid fire. You're like, okay, this was a good maze after all. Yeah, and especially if she's having a creative outlook on it, because I know she's a very creative person. Right. So if she's working directly with the creative team on this, I feel like there's a uh, some really cool opportunities. Right. Not to mention, I think, uh, and this is going for saying, um, when Ghostbusters got announced, I was all for it. Um, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. I love the Ghostbusters. I mean, that original lineup is just is great, and they're all freaking funny. And I and I realized that you know a lot of people's issue with Ghostbusters, I think, when it was coming, it was like, how are you gonna mix a comedy horror movie, you know, and how are you gonna bring that to life? And they very much, very well executed that, like perfectly and um i was all for it i think i i personally said before the event uh it was going to be the underdog of the event and it, it really was <laughs> it was a very good maze and and it was really well executed and yeah so what's next what do we got next on this let's okay we're going to start from the top now so the texas chainsaw massacre is looking like it's uh, making its return to hhn um so i think i talked with i forgot who i talked with about this but um, I feel that, you know, with the Titans of Terror, they've been, of course, uh, a, they, they represent the event, uh, and they've been representing the event, like, throughout the years. Like, really, when you think of Horror Nights, you think of a lot of these big properties, like Leatherface, Nightmare on Elm Street, Michael Myers, 
you know, Jason. That, that's just to name a few. Those are those are ones that have just been coming back year after year. Um, and it's and it's cool to me that like usually what they'll do is they'll take a year off from Titan of Terror and then they'll bring them back. Um, I think it's a way to go. I think I, me personally, because I love every Titan of Terror. Um, I think that every year they should at least include one of them. Um, but bi yearly as well is not bad as you know to give everyone a break of just seeing those those faces. Um, what I'm hoping to get out of this maze, and and I I don't know about you, but this is me. I'm a huge fan of the 2003 uh, remake that they did. So I'm hoping they go to that darker version of that movie and kind of do a maze based around that film. Um, I know we've gotten Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 in the past. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre this year is based around the 2003 remake, um, which was one of my favorites, and it was a little bit darker, and it really told the origin story of who Leatherface was, so that's pretty cool. Um, before I go any further, too, I mean, I'll, I'll let you talk about Texas, but um, Billie Eilish is also rumored to be in the backlot metro set area where Creepshow was last year, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre right now is, is, is looking like it's going to be in the Waterworld queue, which we've been speculating as well. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I feel like we've had a few... I think we, I think most people have summed down that water road queue to either Candyman initially, um, but as it got built more and more, people are like, "Oh, he's coming!" The Texas Chainsaw, yeah, uh, Leatherface is coming. Um, yeah. I, I agree. I, I've never, obviously, you know, I'm very new to this whole horror thing, so right. I never got to see uh, Leatherface. But based upon my, you know, watching of the films, uh, they're pretty terrifying. Yeah, um, chainsaws are obviously a very good scare, yeah. especially with the opportunity of you're not going to be able to see Leatherface coming in some of these instances, and him right. just revving that chainsaw up and coming at you is going to, you know, make people poop their pants. Right. I imagine, because that's a loud noise, and he's a terrifying... Especially if they get the people that match his physique, like I like, imagine. Yeah. You know, six foot something, you know, 240 buff guys, like... Right. That'll be, it'll be terrifying. Uh, Very interesting, yeah. Uh, and I, I also think the gore aspect of it uh, if they do bring back smells, I think that always makes Texas Chainsaw Massacre more of a grueling experience, especially if they want right. to tap into that 03. Um, you know, it was the gore, like, if you have to walk through, like, the meat, so you got to walk yeah. through, like, the hooks. Um, especially, or oh, it'd be really cool, too, like, if you begin at the gas station. You know yeah. What I mean, it'd be real cool there. Um, just work your way through the town and work your way up to the, the, to the house. Yeah. Yeah. Have like a big uh, facade within the within the maze leading into the house. Oh, that would be so great if you have the beginning of the gas station. You're kind of like, okay, cool, and then you get to the the house. You get to like, much like how they did with House of a Thousand Corpses last year. You started yeah. at the, the museum and then you made your way to the house, which was yeah, yeah. Not it, but it was it's a good example. Yeah, definitely. And I think if yeah. once again, if if budgets if budgets an issue, um, you could use a lot of the same sets you were using in. House of a Thousand Corpses, right? Um, because it kind of matched that that era, yeah. Uh, of you know, cell, rundown, Texas type deal, right? Um, so I think that there's always that opportunity, and I think that's one thing I'm expecting to see overall this year is a lot of reusing of previous things, yeah. Um, because obviously we lost some time between March and now, and uh, the park's not opened. Um, I know that they have been working on certain things, but. I also know that, you know, they probably are limited in how many people they can have working at a time. Right. Um, so I'm imagining, like I said, I, I'm imagining a lot of reusing of things, um, a lot of, you know, just kind of painting over things um, um, so that they don't have to, you know, put as much on the builders um, right. and, and painters and things like that. So that's what I'm imagining overall. And I'm really excited for Texas Chainsaw because, like I said, I've never experienced it. Um, the Titans are always scary. They're always going to pull people. Yeah. Um, and they're just going to really give us the opportunity to to be be scared. I agree 100%. I love Texas Chainsaw, and I have no problem with this coming. I'm really looking forward to seeing what version they do. Uh, yeah. Next one, I know this is a personal favor for me and you. The Walking Dead Attraction. More Say zombies. it with me. More, More zombies, zombies than, than ever. ever, man. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go on a limb here and say, like, I'm actually personally uh, looking forward to walking through this again, only because it's been closed for so long, and I actually was not fortunate enough to go on the closing night or the closing day that they officially closed it down. So I'm, I'm looking forward to revisiting the attraction. And 
the hopes is that they do change some stuff up, uh, maybe that are related to more of the newer seasons. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it's been closed for some time, and maybe that was the initial plan to like you know retheme it eventually. But um, overall, I, I think me, uh, you know, just being an early Walking Dead fan. Um, it's going to be cool to revisit this attraction, being that it's been closed for so long. And I know a lot of HHN fans out there always hate this attraction because it always returns for uh, Horror Nights, even though it's usually a year-round thing. But me personally, I mean, since I have not stepped in it since Halloween Horror Nights, um, which I think the last time I stepped in it was actually with you because you had never walked through it, um, you know, that was the last time I actually ever stepped into it. So, uh, you know, it's going to be good to kind of revisit it and, and check it out. Maybe, and again, the hopes is that they do change some scenes for the newer seasons, but... Only time will tell with this one. I definitely, I definitely agree that I just both as much as we like to joke about it and like, oh, it's gonna suck. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to be able to revisit it again because um, I've only been in it once. Yeah, uh, and you said that my experience with it was not the top notch. Yeah, I mean, I they really usually guess. they usually go all out with it, and the the experience that we had, it looked like a lot of the actors were probably on break or something. Yeah, definitely. It looks like there may have been a cast change, so yeah. that kind of sucked. Um, and if they and if they do, you know, bring back the same thing with little touches, um, more zombies, obviously. Um, <laughs> and you know, this is another thing I was thinking about is, uh, you know, I, and I don't know if either of us are going to have the answer to this. Are are they going to cut back the amount of scare actors? Or are they still going to keep that high level of scare actors and just put make them more dense throughout the mazes? Right. Um, um, because I imagine like. You still want to be able to, you know, have all those scares, and you want to make obviously keep all of your veterans there. Um, so that's what I, I'm imagining. I think is going to happen is there might be more action characters in these mazes, right? Maybe not at the same time, but more transition and more cast changes. Yeah, um, just for their own safety. Yeah. No. I. So yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens with it. Um, Next maze we're going to talk about, Invisible Man, uh, which is going to be rumored to be in the Parisian Courtyard. Um, Invisible Man, so did we... Me and you saw that together, right? Yeah, we did. We saw that in yeah. the hunt. And it was... Me and you actually enjoyed it more than we thought we were, honestly, because it really shocked us in a lot of ways, different scenes, and that ending was a very good like twist ending, and it was really good. Um... So I, I know everyone's biggest uh, issue with this property coming this year is, like, of course, compared to the original um, 1930s Invisible Man, I mean, you can't, there's not a lot of work with as far as, you know, how, how to uh, execute scares and, and, and do all that, but I think it really all depends on what scenes they choose and how they choose to execute them. Now, I mean, one scene that comes to mind, and here's spoilers, a little bit of spoilers for the movie, but one scene that comes to mind big time is the restaurant scene. Um, the way that scene was executed, I could see that potentially having a spot in the maze. Yeah, I think there's a lot of scenes that are opportunities. I was just off the top of my head. The first one I'm thinking is going through like the prison. Yeah. Um, I feel like we, you know, you can walk those hallways and see what's going down, being in the cell and escaping the cell and kind of going out towards the parking lot is going to be really cool. And yeah. I'm imagining they're going to incorporate that because that's rather easy to to get together a little hallway scene and a little room that you walk through. I mean, you could just use some of the us white walls, you know. There it is. We, that's all we want is white walls. That's all we want, white walls, man. <laughs> Exclusive merch coming out later on this year, man. <laughs> um, so I'm imagining we're going to get some of that. Obviously, the restaurant scene is really cool. Uh, anything with a house, even uh, the house that she's at when she's trying to escape them. Yeah. Um, it's going to be really cool. Um, and I'm imagining we're going to get towards the end a little, once again, homage to us. Uh, you're going to be in a room and you're going to be like, is that a dummy or is that a real person in the suit? Right. So yeah. um, no. that, that, I can see that happening. Yeah, I agree. And if they use a lot of the, uh, you know, HHN in the past has used a lot of these uh, mirror effects where they can make something there and not. So I can easily see them uh, incorporating, like, you see him in the suit and then he just disappears. You know what I mean? Like, that could be a really cool effect if they uh, if they really capitalize on that. And you, I, I would imagine you'd probably see that a lot throughout the maze, which would honestly be a good scare because your attention can be focused on one thing and then someone can come out on another thing. So I think if they execute that well, I think it can be good. Yeah, definitely. Like, it just reminds me back going back on Ghostbusters, the library scene, like yeah. how awesome that was. 
Right. Or uh, was it Orlando Slimer? Like that was really cool too. The way they, yeah. they, they use those effects. So right. we can see some of that coming to coming here, I think. It'd be good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I honestly uh I wanna see how they can execute this. So I'm I'm going in with a very open mind on this one as well. One, this is one I know me and you are very excited for. We binge watched this show in like a day. Um and it's something that and I can further confirm that this one is coming, so that's a good sign on your end and on my end as well. Um today, uh I'm gonna pull up the article real quick. Uh Inside Universal, if you guys don't know, a YouTube channel on Universal, and they have their own website, um, actually came out with an article saying they were filming some HHN commercials today. Um, and one of the com- and one of the scenes, they said, and get this one, the bent neck lady was a part of today's production, but was shot separately. And yes, we are talking the haunting. Of the don't house. tell me that. Don't tell me she's there. The haunting Ooh. of Hill House. It's looking like this is going to be the big Netflix property, of course, with the um, not-so-successful Season 2 of Stranger Things, you know, not being as good as a maze as we thought it would be. Um, I think the Haunting of Hill House can definitely bring something to the table. Um, Of course, we've talked about this time and time again on the channel. We are huge fans of it. There's a lot of scenes they can work off. Um, Just going into the house in general would be cool. And I think it would be a little cool Easter egg if they can execute it to see, like, random ghosts just sitting around the maze, just kind of standing there to be a distraction and then for a scare opportunity. That's just me, at least, though. They better have moving statues. That's all I'm saying. Right. Because that was was so cool. Yeah. Um, Oh, man. Just listen. Just go back to our maze treatments, Universal. We had some great ideas. If If you're running out of ideas, we got some stuff for you. Uh, that was your maze that you did, right? That was my maze. We yes. also critiqued it and added to it. Um, I just really, I really, they, if they if they do it as Stranger Things too, you have my word now. I may never yeah. go back to the event. Yeah, I never go back if they ruin this for me. No, I don't think they will. Usually, first year mazes do a really good job. Um, being that season two has been announced, but there's no trailers for it yet. I don't even know if they've started filming it yet. This would be a good opportunity to kind of promote that further. I hope they would release a trailer by then, and I hope a season two would probably be released by then. Being that um, last week, especially with the whole, uh, at least in Los Angeles, I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, but um, restrictions have been lifted to start filming again with productions as far as TV shows and, and movies go. So that's a good sign looking maybe. The Haunting of uh, Blind Manor might be coming out uh, pretty soon, hopefully. Um, and I'm hoping that's a good uh, marketing opportunity for that, at least. Um, you know, experience the maze and then go watch season two of The Haunting. You know, go watch The Haunting of Blind Manor. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I think seeing that they filmed that commercial today with the bent neck lady, they shot it separately, is a good sign that this further is coming to the event. Um, we all know the bent neck lady was a huge part of this uh, this production and this this show, and um, it, it's really one of the staples of the show. A lot of people that's 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 probably what you hear more talk about more than anything. So I'm excited, man. Haunting the Hill House is also rumored to be, of course, in the Mummy Q. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I, I thought it was going to be in stage Soundstage 29 where Stranger Things was last year. But it's looking like it's going to be in the Mummy queue, and we, as we've seen, that they've started construction on the Mummy queue with the, they have a tent out and a, and a maze layout out. So I'm excited, and I know you you are very excited for this as well. Uh, me and you have a, a deep love for this show, and, and we really like we like I said, we binge watched it in one day. Uh, once he got me started, I was hooked, and I had to finish it. So I'm excited for this one. No, definitely, I, I'm so excited. I was just thinking, just my mind's flowing with ideas, and. One of them would be like if they could accomplish the same effect of like on the haunted mansion when you're in the queue line, right? They drop the lady. Oh my god, yeah. if they could do that with her. Oh man, that'd be we're all in for a scare, aren't we? Uh, so moving on uh, to our last two, at least for mazes, um, Beetlejuice, uh, which has been in, in the speculated lineup since the beginning, is looking like it's staying here, and it's looking like it's going to be right next to Billie Eilish, where Creepshow was last year. It looks like they're doubling up in that area this year um, for mazes, which is a very interesting take on this, because I don't think ever before they have ever doubled up in that area. So I'm curious to see how lines are going to work and everything, but it's looking like Beetlejuice is uh, still on the, on, the, on the lineup, and I'm very excited for that with the execution of Ghostbusters and how well that did last year as far as being like a comedy horror movie um beetlejuice of course the the amazing talented michael keaton um you know is coming to uh to hhn this year 
And I, it, it looks like it, it could be a really fun maze, man. I can already see a lot of stuff with that. Of course, you and I both experienced the I Like Scary Movies experience, so that was really cool to see a lot of those uh, famous scenes come to life in art form. Um, and we really got to kind of live the Beetlejuice experience with that, which I thought was really cool. So then bringing it to a maze, I cannot wait for this, and I hope that um, it's executed well. And I'm hoping the facade is Dante's Inferno. That's just me, though. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen this film in a in a cool minute. Yeah, but I, I just know that um, there's gonna be those like he's like Ghostbusters. I mean, I think this is going to be. Hey, we did really well with Ghostbusters, and that's I think that's more of a fan favorite than Beetlejuice. Yeah, only slightly because I both I think they both have some really good. Fans. Yeah, they're both up there, but I think you're right with Ghostbusters. It's a yeah. little bit more. Yeah, so it was like we took our chance with Ghostbusters, and it and most people if you if you they ranked last year's. 10 mazes i was probably in at least four or five on most people at least in the top five yeah yeah um and i and i think oh they that was a sign that they could do it and could do it well yeah um, and people really enjoyed him on throwback thursday nights um, right and people just enjoy him at the park in general so it's why not um, yeah you own the rights to it probably i don't know how much longer you own the rights to it, but you own the rights to it so might as well get it done Right. Um, and really, once again, give a, give us the surprising scares. Uh, people are going to be walking in there and saying, you know, having fun, you know, saying his name three times and stuff. And, yeah. Um, that would be really funny, though, if they can't listen to the amount of times you say it. And when you say it the third time, he actually shows up. Right. It's going to be great. I can also see this being the, uh, the HHN uh, Twitter password code. Um, especially if you have Beetlejuice standing out front of the maze, you know, you give him the passcode and he gives you something. Um, I... Me, personally, uh, much how they executed with, of course, Ghostbusters being, of course, you got the uh, the card here of, uh, of uh, uh, Luis Tuli. Um, I hope that it's Beetlejuice and he gives you a card that says, like, Beetle Guys, Beetle Guys, Beetle Guys. Like, something like that for his, you know, promoting, like, his paranormal thing or whatever. I, I, I really think that would be a, a funny kind of giveaway or, like, a flyer of some sort. Um for uh, Beetlejuice. So I can see Beetlejuice standing out in front of the maze uh, doing a Twitter password. And I can also see the guy who actually plays him at Universal Studios being that guy that stands out in front of the maze, which would be really cool. Yeah, I think that one probably lends itself to being the best Twitter password. I'm trying to think of any other ones on here that are... Maybe Billy Eilish, but I think Beetlejuice is like the going to be the place that's going to be the Twitter password this year, honestly. I don't see Haunting a Hill. Yeah. Haunting a Hill. Maybe Haunting a Hill House. You can have, of course, whatchamacallit, the uh, the, little, the main sister out there maybe, you know, trying to convince people or something. Yeah, or you could have the, uh, the, the couple, the older couple that have been there for like ever. Yeah. Uh, the ones that like t- tend to the land. Yeah. Maybe them. Um, but I'm or even with think... Beetlejuice, you can have uh, the couple in there standing out in front as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think. Like, I, I, I agree. That's probably the other one. But I'm trying to look through them, through them in my head. Um, besides the Walking Dead, because obviously we know that's going to be the best choice, right? To give Twitter passwords every night. Right. More zombies than ever. That's a passcode every night. I know. <laughs> it right? doesn't change. Yep. Or it's um, if Rick dies, we riot, right? It's, or it's, or it's uh, no, uh, so, if Daryl dies, we, we riot. Or it's uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I think Beetle just is looking like or, it's probably. Uh, you just gotta get a, you just get, or you just get bashed in the head with a bat. Yes, the Negan. <laughs> the Twitter password. Negan's the fucking guy you talk to for the Twitter password. I'm all for that. But yeah, Beetlejuice, man, I'm excited for it, and I can't wait. Located right behind uh, Billie Eilish, it's looking like for a rumor right now. Um, so like I said, they're doubling up in the creep show area. Um, I'm just more worried of how that's going to be line control-wise, but I guess they'll figure something out. Um, all right, the last maze on this speculated lineup, Universal Monsters The Brides, music by Slash. Um, so you think of one bride, you think of the, fr- the Bride of Frankenstein, obviously, but... Being that it's brides, plural, um, now you're looking at Dracula's brides, you're looking at the Bride of Frankenstein, any other bride that's been in the Universal Monsters uh, era, uh, how they can execute that. Now, Scott from SoCal Exploring did mention that, of course, a Bride of Frankenstein versus the Brides of Dracula could be the overall theming of this maze, but 
I don't know. I, the way I look at this, it, it could be it, the maze could be two different parts. You get the first part with you know Bride of Frankenstein. You know, you may be seeing her with Frankenstein. You may be you know just seeing her point of view, and then the second half being the Brides of Dracula, like them servicing Dracula and being like you know trying to seduce other men to kill them and stuff. So. It could be two ways like that, and of course, music by Slash. Slash has been a longtime partner of um, Universal. Now uh, he's been doing the Universal Monsters uh, mazes, and he's done his own maze, Clowns 3D. Um, so I don't know, man. Uh, Universal Monsters in the past has not disappointed me so far. So I'm actually, I'm looking forward to the next chapter of the Universal Monsters. Honestly, same. I I, I will always regret not being able to go to, to year one of Universal Monsters. Right. Uh, because I heard it was just. Tremendous, phenomenal. Yes, uh, it's tremendous. Phenomenal. No <laughs> one does it better. It's tremendous. <laughs> um, so uh, we we'll probably for that. But that's besides the point. Um, I'm really excited once again. I I didn't even know the brides of. I didn't know. I was trying to think of what are the other brides because I couldn't think of them off the top of my head. Yeah, the so brides of Dracula is always a good choice. The other there's only two brides that come to my mind. Um, uh, the one is obviously the Bride of Chucky, but that, I don't think that has anything. Right, to do with I don't, I don't know if that's part of the Universe of Monsters, there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and the second one to me definitely has nothing to do with the Universe of Monsters. She's a wonderful scare actress, and not scare. Um, so, Bride. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're crossing, we're crossing so, curses now, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think she deserves her own maze too because that character is phenomenal. Right, but that's near there, here, nor there. This is an HHN video, yes. Um, so I, I, I'm excited because they haven't let us down yet. I think a lot of people were expecting um, Frankenstein and, and the Mummy, or no, Frankenstein and uh, the Wolfman to suck. Yeah, the year two, um, and I think it was a pretty good maze. Was it Universal Monsters Year One? No, but was it Stranger Things Two? Or no. Alien First Predator 2? No. And then these other ones that failed their second year? Right. No. So, um, hopefully they keep up the good momentum. I think my, my one thing is, is you know, this is going to be the difficult part, is when it comes to, like, the Bride of uh, Frankenstein, the Brides of Dracula, you now you're diving in, diving in deeper into the Universal Monsters. Um, right. And so are you going to still have the same crowd love for it? Right. Um, or I feel like you now have to bring it to the next level to get the crowds to be excited because people are like, oh, Frankenstein's monster. Love him. The Wolfman. Yeah. Love him. The Mummy. Love him. Invisible Man. Love him. But now you're getting into like more of the secondary universal monsters. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, I think that's, that provides some difficulty. And um, I hope to be pleasantly surprised by this. Yeah, I, I feel like the bride herself has a, a quite a big following, especially because she got her own mural at Universal Studios. So I think with the bride, at least the Frankenstein, that will be not an issue to sell. I think it's more if if they decide to do because I'm seeing brides, so you know I just think of Dracula's bride. So if they decide to do Dracula's brides, they got to sell those more at least. Um, but I think Bride of Frankenstein will not need to nearly be uh, as much sold as as. The Dracula's Brides because she's got quite the following as well. Of course, with her iconic, you know, look and everything, which a lot of people have replicated over the years as cosplays. So we'll see, man. I mean, music by Slash. Though. I mean, Slash always does amazing music for these mazes, and it's original stuff. Even if she's busy, he'll take the time out of his like touring schedule or whatever he's doing to uh, set aside with uh, Universal Studios and create this soundtrack. And it's it's always it's always great music to me, at least. Um, I agree. I mean, and uh, he's had three months already to be writing music here. Right. Um, so I'm hoping he's got he's got something because Lord knows he probably hasn't been doing anything for the last three months. Right. I know I haven't been really doing anything. <laughs> you haven't really, really been doing anything. I know. I just so. got back in May. So <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, no scare zones have been listed on this map just yet. Usually, scare zones are based on um, original ideas that Murdy comes up with. Every now and then, he'll throw in like an IP idea if it relates to something. But most of the time, they've they, like the last year. I think it was all original stuff. I believe. Yes, it was all original last year. Um, so no scare zones. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, but of course, the live show returning, the one we're both disappointed for, that we might just sit in there for air conditioning. Is the Jabberwockies? 
Man, uh, I mean, I, this is just this is just me, man. I'm every time we get these speculation maps, I just get more and more excited. And I know that I I told myself that I'm probably not going to go till October, but yeah. I, I, as we're as we're filming this, I'm thinking, oh, okay, maybe if I do this, I can come sooner. Or maybe if I do this, I can come sooner. <laughs> like, uh, I want to be there already. Yeah. So much, but yeah, yeah. Um, just to just to be able to to be in the the energy that is that is horror nights, right? Um, in all of these different horror events that uh, I think all of us have been def- desperately needing and and wanting in the haunt community, right? So I, I'm really as much as like you know some people are going to complain about this of well we didn't get ten mazes or these IPs suck or whatever, or there's not enough originals or Universal has money. What are you guys doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm excited that they're at least still mo- plowing forward and saying, Hey, we're going to do our best to put on an event and we're only going to be putting on quality. Hopefully. Yeah. So, I mean, that I think, I think that's where they're coming from. Of, if we can't do 10, well, let's do six well, or seven. Well, yeah, let's execute. Um, that's, that's, that's my hope. Yeah. Um, and, and I agree. I, I think, like I keep saying, I'd rather have six really well put together mazes rather than ten last minute kind of shit mazes. And maybe like one or two are really well executed. You know what I mean? So, and of course, with the whole like COVID 19 going on and stuff, it, you know, I think they're looking more as to social, trying to social distance it as well and, and trying to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more curious this year of how they're going to do crowd control. As far as how the mazes are and stuff, and, and how lines are going to be this year, um, obviously, of course, with the new guidelines for COVID, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's probably going to be a limited tickets to each night. So, and I'm already hearing a lot of people not wanting to go because of, of all this. But honestly, the way I look at it is, the, those people saying they don't want to go, that's one less person we got to wait in line with. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's one less person we can actually enjoy the, the park. You know, and. and Less less waiting times for lines, but um, I, I think it's going to be a, a good event. Um, of course, the one that's lowest on my list is Billie Eilish right now, but I'm hoping it blows me away. Um, I'm not like I said. I'm going to go in very open minded with it. I, again, I'm not a fan of, of the music, um, just because the the taste of music is, is a lot different from what she she puts out. But I think uh, if it's executed well, I can just ignore the fact of wh- what her music is, and I can be like, wow, that was a solid maze, you know. So. I'm hoping that I walk out with that impression, um, but I'm going in very open-minded with it, and I, I'm willing to give it a, a chance and, and willing to see what it has to offer. Maybe, like I said, maybe it's going to blow me away. So um, we'll see. But that's really it for the uh, speculated map. Do you have any last words you want to say before we log off? Last words here. Uh, I I don't know what my lowest is. I'd have to think about that because I'm I'm pretty pretty stoked on this lineup. I mean, right. obviously, we're gonna. It's no. It's no secret what my number one would be. Um, right. and that's uh, the little bit naked lady in the Hill House. Oh, I thought it was Walking uh, Dead. Uh, I mean, that's number two, bro. It was really close. It was a coin flip. You didn't see yeah. me on the side. I was flipping coins, but it was a coin flip, know. Doc. Easily, man. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was a coin flip. It was. It was heads or tails. You know, it was tough. It was tough. Um, the only thing I already know that is going to suck, and I'm only whining about this because, you know, I'm, I'm overweight. You know, that's no secret. Um, just wearing that mask to truck back to those four yeah. mazes. Oh, man. That, that hill is a freaking mission to go back to. Going down, it's easy. Going up, it sucks. Down, oh, man. That's going to... Oh, man. I, yeah. That's, that's the it one part I'm thankful like about. That, it looks like we're going to take that hill a lot slower than what we usually do. <laughs> So yeah. Tell me if you're watching, we're not doing <laughs> multiple trips back to the damn metro sets. All right. <laughs> it's and that's trip, it. Trip, and we better hit all four. You're hitting all four as quick as possible. That's that. Yeah. No ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> Making want to roll with us. That's it. <laughs> um. Another and, thing, and we're gonna hit those. We're gonna hit them as fast as we can. Um. So that. We can hit Toxic Tunnel with 17 X's right when yes. it starts. Yes. Uh, another thing that uh, I, I, I might want to mention, too, is uh, from what I've been hearing, and it's probably not true, I don't know yet, but there's rumors that the Terra Tram might be making a return this year because there's no Terra Tram garage. So if that happens, uh, it's going to be an opportunity for you to experience the Terra Tram because I know you never got to do that. Um, Terra Tram, personally, has always been one of my favorites. Um, I like walking in back of those iconic sets, and if they execute it right, I think it could be good. Plus, it's very open, so perfect for uh, social distancing and stuff, so 
I'm really excited to see uh, how this is going to play out this year, and I can't wait to, to go to the event, man. I'm really excited. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week because the return of the Mindless War podcast comes back, episode 100, featuring me, Sammy, and Logan. It's going to be a fun time, man. We're going to film it this Sunday. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of horror news and just reminisce on the uh, the past episodes of the Mindless War podcast, man. It's, it's going to be a fun time. Very much looking forward to reconnecting with the boys and uh yeah it's gonna be fun so stay tuned for any more uh hhn updates any haunt updates comes our way we'll inform you um as far as where we're looking at this year um tune in uh sometime in the next couple of days as well because we're going to be launching a new east versus west as well uh talking about both coasts so that's going to be fun um and i'm anthony what's your boy sam Yep, uh, we are the Knights of Horror. Hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media as well. As well as check out our merch shop because we got amazing merch from podcast merch to Knights of Horror merch to East vs. West merch. And coming soon, you heard it here first, we want White Walls. Limited edition, exclusive, only through Horror Night season. We're going to be launching probably at the end of August. So you're going to want to get that shirt because that's going to be a for sure. Once it's gone, it's gone. Ain't that right, Sam? You heard it here. <laughs> right, Sam. You heard it here, because that's what that's all Sam wants in life. It's white walls. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in uh, for this speculation, and we will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.